Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Welcome back. Let's talk about the Tao and their home on the elemental plane of Earth. The elemental plane of Earth is located across from the plane of air. It is next to the plane of water and the plane of fire, where the two touch creates paraplanes of ooze and magma. The closer you get to the plane of water, the more swampy the land becomes. Twisted trees and thick vines grow in muck and slime. There is life here in the form of biting insects, but it would also be a great place to find a hag, I think. One living in the plain of ooze. On the other side, the mountains nearest to the plain of fire are known as the fountains of creation. They are called the furnaces and operate as such for the Tao. Lava moves through caverns under and around the mountains. A sulfur smell fills the air here and the Tao have forges in these areas to process their ore and precious metals. There are also the quasi elemental planes of mineral and dust. Although one commenter in a previous video pointed out that in 5e, the positive and negative energy planes are removed from the inner plane. So these quasi-elemental planes are apparently no more in 5th edition cosmology. The Great Wheel has been rearranged. Still, they're kind of neat, so you can leave them in if you wish. The elemental plane of Earth is a place of hidden riches. It is a wall against all foes and a grave for the greedy. The whole plane is made of rock, soil, and stone. In earlier editions of D&D, the plane was underground, so to speak. There was no top, no surface, and vast tunnels were created within the plane. The whole plane had movement too, which caused earthquakes periodically within these tunnels, sometimes collapsing them. It is hostile to life, but not aggressively hostile like the plane of fire. The plane of Earth is uncaring and unconcerned about life in it and around in 5th edition, the plane of Earth is a chain of mountains rising higher than any mountain range on the prime material. There are caves and plenty of the creatures that live here burrow and move underground. Each type of rock, soil, mineral, metal, ore, sand, and dirt can be found in the elemental plane of Earth. Mining is difficult here, and the Tao seem to be the only creatures that have been largely successful in their mining operations. The harsh conditions don't stop future dwarves or humans from trying to get riches from the plane of Earth. Earth elementals are the most numerous creatures that live in the plane of Earth. Animated crystal golem type creatures also roam about, as well as zorns. These creatures can move through the Earth like a fish through water, rock wrapping around them so as they move, they leave no tunnel. Not native other intelligent creatures have migrated to the plane of Earth, like dwarves, copper dragons, gargoyles, mephits, stone giants, and others. The most industrious and civilized race on the plane of Earth is the Tao. They are Earth genies and have numerous communities within the plane. Surprisingly, they are often in conflict with the native elemental life. Underneath one of the greatest mountains there lives the largest Tao community known as the Great Dismal Delve. This is an underground maze work that links to locations in the plane of Earth. All the tunnels in the Great Dismal Delve lead to the sevenfold maze work. The maze work is a trading center and a palace for the noble Tao. In 5th edition, the capital city of the Tao is known as the City of Jewels, and within the capital city is a palace known as the Hidden Fulcrum which is a secretive place where the ruler of the Tao lives, known as the Great Khan. Kabril Ali al Sara al Zalazil rules the Tao with a keen eye and an iron heart. He is also known as the Fountain of Wealth, the Perfect Compass, the Stone Sultan, and the Master of Traders. The Great Khan is a little large and fat for an Earth genie, but he has a quick wit which has gotten him this position. The city is made from precious stones and metals, including gemstone inlaid spires that top most buildings. It can be difficult to secure a meeting with the Great Khan. Nobody is sure where the hidden fulcrum is, not even the noble Tao. A gift or bribe to the right Tao could be enough to get you a meeting, roughly anywhere from 10,000 to 80,000 gold pieces. After accepting the bribe, it may still be a month before you visit, and even then you are blindfolded folded and led through the maze work for several hours. This confuses the visitors so they will not be able to backtrack and locate the Great Khan. The Tao have little sympathy for anyone but themselves. They are mostly concerned with profit. Travel and trade are always motivated by riches. They will steal and lie to obtain riches or information on riches, but rarely go to war. Stealing from a Tao in the City of Jewels can result in death. There is powerful magic that alerts the Tao if any gems go missing, and each of the gems and items the Tao have collected have a magical stamp on them declaring it the property of the Great Khan. A simple detect magic spell can reveal this marking. The Tao occasionally travel to the Prime Material Plane, mostly Zakara in wild regions. The population of the Great Dismal Delve is close to 100,000 genies and 1 million slaves. The Tao love to enslave other creatures, believing themselves to be better than all. Food for their slaves are mostly luminescent fungus farmed underground. 
The Tao are greedy, malicious creatures. They adorn themselves with jewelry and rare metals to feel more important and to look more important to what they would call lesser races. When meeting other races, they prefer those races to look poor, which reflects how the Tao think of them. The Tao do not need to eat, but do so out of luxury, to the point of grinding up gemstones or using gold dust on their food. This act of devouring wealth is something Tao do as a type of status symbol. I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon that keep these videos going. If you'd like to support the channel, consider joining Patreon or clicking the join button. I run a weekly podcast all about my adventures in D&D called the Saturday Morning D&D Show. You can catch my co-host Lucian and I live Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific here on YouTube. Click the link below to be taken to our channel for previous episodes. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.